Hello, friends. This is Jim here with uh, uh, Science Talk. And this is a paper that's just been accepted for publication. So um, I got a little head start here, you know, seeing the abstract. Looking forward to the paper coming out later on uh, this year or early next year. But anyway, it will appear in Geophysical Research Letters. And a whole bunch of several authors on here. Uh, I guess Keeping Ren is the lead author. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. The title, Increasing in Homogeneity of the Global Oceans. In homogeneity. You know what that's implying? Oceans are not being well mixed. Okay. Let's take a look at the abstract. The ocean is inhomogeneous in hydrographic properties with diverse water masses. Yet how this inhomogeneity has evolved in a rapidly changing climate has not been investigated. Using multiple observational and reanalysis data sets, we show that the spatial standard deviation, or SSD, of the global ocean has increased by 1.4 plus or minus 0.1% in temperature and 1.5 plus or minus 0.1% in salinity since 1960. A newly defined thermohaline inhomogeneity index a holistic measure of both temperature and salinity changes has increased by 2.4 plus or minus 0.1 percent. So it sounds like whatever methodology they're using for the analyses, they've gotten the precision basically to win the tenth of a percent. Because all the errors are the same in what they've reported thus far. Climate model simulations suggest that the observed ocean inhomogeneity increase is dominated by anthropogenic forcing and projected to accelerate by 200 to 300 percent during 2015 to 2100. Ouch. Geographically, the rapid upper ocean warming upper ocean warming at mid to low latitudes dominates the temperature in homogeneity increase while the increasing salinity in homogeneity is mainly due to the amplified salinity contrast between the subtropical and subpolar latitudes so let's look at the key points. We'll look at the plain language summary. And I have a bit to say about this because this is like incredibly important research. I'm actually looking forward to seeing the entire paper. Key points. The spatial inhomogeneity of global ocean thermal haline properties has increased over the past decades. The increase is primarily caused by anthropogenic forcing and is projected to accelerate in the future. Up and Upper ocean warming and amplified salinity contrast between the subtropics and subpolar regions dominate the inhomogeneity increase. Okay. Plain language summary. Oceans inhomogeneity quantified by the spatial standard deviation of the global water mass is closely linked to the global ocean's physical and biogeochemical processes. Although previous studies have reported various aspects of the long-term ocean changes, the change of the global ocean in homogeneity as an integral measure of the water mass diversity remains unknown. Our study shows that the overall inhomogeneity has increased by, and you know, the same values that reported uh, above, 1.4 plus or minus 0.1% uh, in temp and 1.5 plus or minus 0.1% uh, in salinity. The observed ocean inhomogeneity increases attributed to anthropogenic forcing and projected to accelerate in the future. The increase in temperature in homogeneity is mainly due to the rapid upper ocean warming at mid to low latitudes. The amplified salinity contrast between the subtropical and subpolar latitudes 
contributes to the salinity in homogeneity increase. Okay. Now they mention, I want to go back to here. They mention the biogeochemical. We're talking about uh, the interactions of, well, let's just start with carbon. Okay, carbon is going to be utilizing what? CO2 and oxygen and all that sort of uh, thing there. Well, you create biomass. Does the biomass, does it sink to the bottom? The you know, marine snow helped along by thermal haline flows. That is a method of sequestration. Okay, that is declining. That is decreasing. So, so the biogeochemical pathways and processes do factor in, especially when you're looking at the chemical species and the physical processes that influence them. Now, let me run back up here. What they're basically saying, okay, first of all, let's look at this phrase here, rapid upper ocean warming. I've discussed that with you. 93% of the emissions, the, that energy is, has gone into the oceans. 240 up to 247 zettajoules down to 2,000 meters with approximately 68% of that in the upper 500 to 700 meters. That's where the heat is being concentrated. So you're rapidly warming up the mid to low latitudes. That's going to create a very sharp temperature gradient if you go down vertically through the water column. That, you know, that ties into this thermal haline inhomogeneity index. That's basically, you know, my, my supposition would be that is measuring how sharp the thermal haline uh, is in other words how severe is the jump in temperature for example you know does it go from say you know 10 c to 8 c or does it go from 10 c to 6 c you know, you know over say the same you know five meter uh, distance vertical distance you know so so that's what, to me it's a measure of, of how severe the uh the difference is, but that also ties into this this increase that they're reporting of one point four plus or minus zero point one percent in temperature. So that's a, that's a standard deviation, spatial standard deviation. So you're looking at you know basically the three D aspect of it, and that is how much variation uh, you have, and you apply the same uh, reasoning to the uh, salinity measures. So going back to you know, rapid upper ocean warming at mid to low latitudes, of course, that makes sense. That's the sun energy is going to be strongest if you measure and say watts per square meter. But there's another thing going on that is also contributing to this in massive increase in the water temperatures at low latitude. Cloud cover is declining. Now, the top of clouds has albedo. It's going to reflect the sunlight energy back to space. Well, clouds are disappearing. So now you got more of that energy reaching the surface, more of that energy is being absorbed, which means you're really heating up the surface water layer, and that is will contribute to this increase in temperature in homogeneity. That's what's going on there. Now Let's look at the, let's take for a moment to consider the salinity. Now, we know that you know, we've got some of the, the big gyres and they bring water from low latitudes to high latitudes. So, of course, they cool down. So, of course, we would expect to see a decline or a decrease in the severity of any temperature changes. But what we're seeing is up north in the high latitudes, we have a lot of fresh water input. We're still having precipitation. We're having ice melt, right? Riverine input. All these factors are decreasing the salinity. And what's happening, though, is we're now starting to see a slowdown in the horizontal gradient or horizontal flow from low to high latitudes. 
So that's going to amplify the temperature contrast, but then it's also going to amplify salinity differences by keeping the fresher water for the north, not allowing it to flow south where it could mix and then moderate the salinity, which then moderates the density. So we're seeing a salinity gradient, not only vertically, but also horizontally. And we're seeing a temperature gradient horizontally as well. Another factor that increases the salinity at low latitudes with declining clouds there's less rain there's less precipitation and it's going to be more evaporation so evaporation is going to exceed precipitation well if you're evaporating you're putting fresh water into the atmosphere which is then by the way carried away you're putting the fresh water but you're leaving the salt behind so you have the same amount of salt, but now you have less water. So you've increased the salinity. That's another factor, another mechanism for what's going on here. So overall, this is, this is extremely important finding. I would love to see this uh, thermal Haley inhomogeneity index develop further. And perhaps you can extend it to, say, a salinity in homogeneity index or a density in homogeneity index that I th you know, think would be a, a good development there. But you've heard me say before that the oceans are stratifying and the stratification is going to be bad because then you're not going to have mixing. You're not going to have sequestration of heat and carbon to death. Well, if if this thermal Haley inhomogeneity, inhomogeneity index is a way to quantify that, this is a this is a very important development, and which and this means we can then show how bad the stratification is getting, and how then this be, that stratification becomes um, a barrier to prevent mixing, prevent sequestration basically prevent vertical motion. And if you're preventing mixing, guess what that's going to do to primary productivity and the food web? Not bloody good. So, um, I'm, I can't wait for this to come out later on this year. So, some, some definitely things to, to be considering here. And uh, we'll talk soon. Thank you for your time. Hello, folks. This is Jim here with Science Talk, asking you to please subscribe to my channel and to inform others of my channel and of the work that I do. Please share to social media platforms that you use. Also, as a reminder, don't forget to click the bell so that you know when I load up more videos. Finally, I ask that you support the work that I do by becoming a patron at patreon.com. Details in the description box below. Thank you for your support.